Hey everyone, it's Colin. I've finally broken down and spent some money on a real video tripod as I got tired of wasting time trying to get smooth camera movements with a photo tripod. My research and a little bit of good timing led me to buy a Benro A1573FS2. That model number is a bit of a mouthful, but basically it's just a combination of Benro legs and S2 head in a convenient kit. The tripod comes packed in a carrying bag, which is nice to have included. Since the tripod's heavier at the head than at the feet, the carrying handle on the bag is offset so it's level when you carry it. Just make sure to put the tripod in the correct way. They also throw in a shoulder strap, but for some reason it's ridiculously long. At its shortest, it's just barely the right length. This particular model of tripod has aluminum legs. They have three segments, and the locking latches have a nice positive engagement to them. The latches themselves are plastic, but the clamping collar is metal. The legs have a round cross section, which makes them stronger. In general, square or rectangular legs are more prone to fail. The whole thing weighs 4.4 pounds, or 2 kilograms. Though there's a more expensive carbon fiber version if you're looking for something lighter. Rubber feet come pre-installed and the tripod includes spikes in the package too. On some other tripods you can retract the rubber feet to reveal the spikes, but on the Benro you need to swap them out by hand which can increase your setup time considerably. At least there's a zippered pocket inside the tripod bag for the spikes and adjustment wrenches. One feature this tripod lacks is a leg spreader, which is actually a good thing. That's because you can unlock these latches and splay the legs to three different positions. This lets you get the tripod lower to the ground while maintaining stability, though at its lowest you need to extend the column up a bit to keep it from hitting the ground. That center column adds about another 7 inches or 18 centimeters of height. The metal twist lock mechanism isn't as easy to manipulate as a side mounted knob and it needs to be fairly tight to keep the column from wobbling. The bottom of the column includes a spring loaded hook which is a nice touch. It lets you hang a weight or your camera bag to help keep the tripod planted. The overall height of the tripod with the column all the way up is almost 62 inches or 157 centimeters. You won't be able to shoot over the heads of a crowd, but it's still a comfortable working height. When setting up, if you want to level the legs, you can because they have both a bubble level and a compass built in. But one of the best features of this tripod is the ball mount. It lets you level the head without having to level the legs by way of a second bubble level at the base of the head. I like the anodized blue color here too, and the metal adjustment knob works pretty smoothly. The head itself is made of magnesium alloy and, according to Benro, actually contains real fluid cartridges. This is a hallmark of video heads and it's what makes for smooth camera movements, but using actual fluid cartridges is really something typically reserved for more expensive gear. It's nice to see that they spent some extra money here. It has a nicely narrow quick release plate. This is a great feature because wider quick release plates, like the one off of my Manfrotto tripod, can keep you from being able to open the battery compartment on the bottom of the camera. A narrow plate lets you swap batteries or memory cards without having to remove it. The only drawback to the Benro plate is that you need to use a coin to screw it into the camera. Getting your camera balanced on the head is pretty important for video. If you don't, it'll tend to tilt up or down on its own and that can make shooting more difficult or potentially ruin a shot. On this tripod, the quick release plate snaps in but can still slide forward and backward about an inch or three centimeters. Then once you have your camera balanced, you simply turn the knob to lock it down. One of the places where Benro seems to have cut features in order to hit a price point is in the pan and tilt controls. There's a drag control for each, but no separate lock. And furthermore, the drag controls don't really vary the stiffness as they should. It's pretty much on or off, so they're effectively just pan and tilt locks. Thankfully, I find the action to be fairly stiff, which is what I prefer for accomplishing slow camera movements. And as you can see here, the head does produce nice, fluid results. 
Getting a smooth, slow tilt was the hardest thing for me to do on my old tripod, and the Benro handles it without a problem. So what the head lacks in features, it does make up for with functionality. The pan and tilt handle is a decent length and has a nicely rubbery grip. One problem on my tripod though, is that when I'd go to slide the camera in, it would hit this pivot point. I was almost ready to send the tripod back, thinking that it was like a horrible design flaw. But then I took a closer look at the photo of the head on Benro's website. It turns out that my tripod was simply assembled wrong. All I had to do was remove the adjustment knob, pull the handle out, and flip that pivot point around. I should note that this piece, like most of the tripod, is made of metal, but the knobs on the head seem to be made of plastic. Overall, this is an interesting tripod. Benro seems to have tried to pack in as many features as it could, but it obviously had to draw a line somewhere in order to meet a price point. It's nice that they seem to err more on the side of build quality than bells and whistles. And the other models in this lineup tend to follow the same philosophy. They just get bigger and can handle heavier cameras. This S2 model is rated for a camera weighing up to 5.5 pounds or 2.5 kilograms, which generally will be a small DSLR or mirrorless setup. While it's priced squarely within the territory of some of the other big names like Manfrotto, I got lucky and picked mine up for $165 US as a demo unit from B&H. At that price, it's an easy decision. But at the $200 it normally retails for, the competition is pretty stiff. I'd recommend this tripod, but only to those who can understand and live with its limitations. As with any photographic equipment, the key here is to do your homework. Thanks for watching.